Preacher here. Join me for God's word on my heart. Preacher here. It's time for God's word on my heart. And you know what God's put on my heart? Have you taken your rest in Christ? Do you find peace in God? You know, God promises a peace that surpasses all understanding. A lighter burden. He promises uh, things like this. Do you have it? I want to share a little bit. Out of Hebrews chapter 4. It says, therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear, lest any of you shall seem to have reached it. For good news came to us, just as to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed entered that rest as he has said I have sworn in my wrath they shall not enter my rest now stop and think about this look at verse 1 right there it says while the promise of entering his rest still stands what does that mean the finished work was paid for on the cross we find our rest in the fact that Christ paid our way to go to heaven. There's nothing I can do to earn my way to heaven. I don't need to be doing these extra works or trying to, to earn my way or get brownie buttons. There's nothing I could do that would make it good enough for me to go to heaven. Christ paid it all. And the promise of his rest is found in the fact that if I believe, if I accept what Christ did on the cross then I have forgiveness. I go to heaven. The promise of his rest is, have you accepted that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose again in three days? Do you believe that he's the one and only son of God? If so, then there's nothing you need to do to get to heaven. You don't have to worry about what would happen if you were to die today. All you need to know is that in Christ, it's all taken care of. So that's why you get, while the promise of his rest still stands. As long as we're still here and Christ hasn't returned, you've still got breath in your body, you got a chance to enter his rest. It says, let us... Fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us, just as to them. The message they heard did not benefit them. He's talking about the Old Testament now. He's talking about the Israelites. He's talking about the fact that they were supposed to, in the desert, make a two-week journey to the Promised Land. And they didn't make it because they were disobedient. They didn't have faith. They didn't trust God. They didn't find their land of rest because they couldn't truly give their life to God. I love this. It says, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Now stop and think about this. John 3.36 says, if you believe in the Son, that's Christ Jesus, you should have everlasting life. But if you believe not in the Son, then God's wrath remains upon you. The only way God's wrath remains upon you is if you haven't accepted Christ. What is God's wrath? Well, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Understand that if I don't accept the fact that Christ paid for my sins, I can't pay for them. And so that death is eternal death. And God didn't intend that hell for me and you. That's for the devil and his demons. So the gift of God through Christ Jesus, that's where you find your rest. 
is eternal life. It says, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works, and again, in this passage, he said, they shall not enter my rest. Since, therefore, it remains for some to enter, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience. Again, he appoints a certain day, today, saying, through David, so long afterward, in the words already quoted, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Have a heart that's willing to accept the message. Have a heart that's willing to accept what Christ has done. Don't let pride say you can do it on your own or you can find another way because there is no other way. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves you so much that he gave his only Son for you. It don't matter what your past is, what you've done. The Bible says come as you are. Because it's not about you. It's about the work that Christ did for you. All you got to do is be willing to accept it. Are you ready to accept that Jesus died for your sins? That he rose again in three days? He's the one and only Son of God? That's all it takes to get to heaven. A lot of people don't want to accept it because along with that accepting what Christ has done for you, they don't want to make that change. They don't want to live their faith. They don't want to truly give their life to God. And it's important that we do. That's what repentance is. It's to change. To believe and to repent. To change. I'm no longer living for myself. I'm going to bear my cross daily. I'm going to live for the Lord. He paid my way to heaven. Now, the thing is, we're going to fail when we're trying to live it, but it's not about our works. We're saved by grace. But if our heart's truly committed to serving God, to living for Him, to being grateful and thankful for what He's done, you know, God's grace covers us. Have you accepted what Christ has done for you? You know, I want to share John 3, 19 through 21. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world. It's Jesus. Jesus has come into the world. And the people loved the darkness rather than light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out by God. You know, one thing is a lot of people don't want to come to the light because they're afraid God's going to expose the sin in their life. And the awesome thing that I've seen is a lot of people that truly do come to the Lord, their sin does get exposed, but in a whole different manner. It's not in a way that, that condemns them. It becomes a testimony. People stand up and say, look, this is what God has saved me from. This is what God turned me from. Pastor Carl used to share on Sundays about a prostitute who gave her life to the Lord and now she's in a ministry bringing other women out of prostitution. Because her sin had been brought into the light, she's able to help other people come out of the darkness. Are you ready to let God use you in that way? Are you ready to truly commit your life to God? 
You know what? If you haven't started a relationship with the Lord, Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you haven't started a relationship with Christ Jesus, I recommend you do it today. Makes an eternity difference. Be blessed.